In this video, I'm going to show you how to derive the geodesic equation. The equation from general relativity that tells you how a particle that is otherwise free moves in curved space-time. One of the central equations of GR, along with the other one, the Einstein field equations, which actually tells you the nature of the space-time. Despite the famous complexity of general relativity, the derivation of the geodesic equation, at least via the method that I'm taking, the action approach, is really surprisingly simple, and it's very interesting and also satisfying to see such a famous equation come out of the algebra. Now, I have actually made a video on this derivation before, but recently I noticed that one of the steps in the algebra was not justified properly. It wasn't wrong, and it certainly didn't screw up the answer, but it wasn't properly justified and it irritated me. It wasn't as good quality education as I was hoping for because of that, and so I finally gotten to the point on my to-do list where it's time to make a replacement video. So, let's get to it! So let's get started with this geodesic equation derivation. The approach I'm going to be using here to pull off the derivation is the action principle. And the reason why I'm choosing the action principle is because in this particular case, the action is especially intuitive. The central principle guiding its motion is that it will take a path of minimum proper distance which will be a curved path, possibly, if the space is curved such that that happens, which is why curvature induced by matter being present will affect the motion of the particle at all. And the reason why this helps us here is because the action principle itself really is just phrasing the problem as an extremization problem. So because it's already kind of naturally in the form intuitively of an extremization problem, we can go straight to the action principle even more easily than normally. The most common thing to do here is to use proper time as the parameter, and so it's useful to remember that the fact that it minimizes proper distance is equivalent to saying that it maximizes proper time. So therefore we can take this to be our action, and that should be extremized. We have a formula for the proper time given by the line element of the metric tensor. We can plug that in, and that gets us here, which means we have this as our Lagrangian. Now we need to set the variation of the action equal to zero, which gives us this. Now this is a bit difficult to work with directly because of the square root. However, the chain rule helps us out here. The chain rule takes us from this down to this. This really does get us in a better position because this action should vanish for all possible integration limits. Therefore, the integrand must be zero but that means the numerator must be zero, which allows us to write this. Now the first thing after that that I did is I multiplied and divided by delta x rho. And the reason why I did that was to get this partial derivative in here and extract out this variation to the side. Now the reason why this is allowed is actually slightly subtler. At first it just looks like I'm multiplying and dividing by the same thing, but notice how these indices are contracted. If we expanded out that sum, yeah, in each term the differential here and here would cancel, but then it would give you four copies of the same term. So you'd effectively be multiplying it by four, by multiplying and dividing by this quantity with the contracted indices, which at first seems like that couldn't be right, but then we remember this whole thing set equal to zero, so changing this by a constant factor doesn't matter, we can always just divide it out. So that step actually is allowed, it's just slightly subtle. Now the next thing I did was I just used the product rule with this partial derivative. It's pretty straightforward, there isn't anything tricky there. Now of course, because the metric tensor is symmetric, this quantity is equal to this one, so we can combine like terms up here to get this thing right there. The next thing I did was just reorder some factors in this last term here in order to prepare it for integration by parts. Then what I did is I moved this d over d tau that's applied to the d rho x mu here, and I moved it over to this thing in parentheses, which got me here. And that, of course, because it's integration by parts, comes at the cost of a minus sign. Now, the reason why we don't have a boundary term on here is, of course, because those endpoints are fixed. So when we plug in the integration bounds into that boundary term, we just get zero because of that. 
Then from here I just applied the product rule and that got me to this. I then move this term over there, so to the front of the expression. I move this term to the middle and then I move this term to the end. I then canceled this differential here, this variation, with the variation that I put in the denominators when I originally brought that partial derivative into the integral as I explained in the beginning. That left me with this here. We can then do some index relabeling in the middle and then pull out another differential factor. It's really the same thing that we had before, but the index is not the same one. And this difference in the index normally wouldn't matter, but it's actually critical here because we already have mu indices in the expression. So it means something different about how things are summed than it did when we were dealing with the row index quantity. Now doing that again is like multiplying this by a factor of four as it was before, except we've got that zero on the other side. So we can multiply it by any constant we want and it doesn't really matter. In fact, when we canceled this delta x row variation here, we were multiplying it by a factor of fourth technically, undoing the factor of four we were technically multiplying it by when we originally introduced it. That subtlety I explained at the beginning. If you've been paying attention and thinking about this, you may have noticed this weird quantity, d over d tau of g mu nu. It's a quantity that showed up a little while ago, and it may seem like, well, what do we do with that? It's kind of a hard quantity to deal with. It's not exactly obvious how to compute that. But the chain rule saves the day again. We can take this from here to there. Now going from here to here, the change I've made is extremely trivial. I've just expressed this two times this quantity as a sum of two copies of it. And that's so trivial you may wonder why I would even do such a thing. And the answer is it sets us up for some convenient dummy index relabeling, which I then perform on this last term here, but not that one. And this allows me to factor out two of these factors and leave behind this very familiar set of partial derivatives of the metric tensor. This is turning into a Christoffel symbol. And at this point, we're almost done, actually. We actually want to remove the integral. The reason why we left it on after we took it off briefly to get rid of the denominator was specifically so that we could use integration by parts very conveniently. But we're so far along in the calculation now that we don't need that anymore. So we can actually drop that with the same arguments. The integration limits here are arbitrary and is always zero for any of those integration limits. So the integrand must be zero. And it also must be zero for any arbitrary variation delta x mu. Therefore, we're just left with this equation, which can then be easily manipulated into the recognizable geodesic equation. About the most complicated thing we have to do is a tiny amount of tensor algebra really just some index juggling to get the complete form of the Christoffel symbol to show up here. And there we go. That is probably the most intuitive way to derive the geodesic equation. So now you have seen how to deduce what the form of the action for the geodesic equation is and then how to carry out the fun and satisfying mathematics it takes to extract the geodesic equation by setting the variation of that action equal to zero. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. Dietrich out.